welcome to another edition of Coffee Break Sports. I am your sports barista, Rod the Magnificent. Come on in to CBS. Come into the break room. We got some predictions for you. Week 8 is here, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm ready to get into who I think is going to pull off some wins and walk away home crying in the car. Before I get into all of that, I just want to give you some reminders. As I always do, hit the subscribe button, hit the follow button, wherever you're watching this podcast, any of the links down low, click all of them. Click all of those links. Add me on all of those platforms so that you will never miss a beat of Coffee Break Sports and also my family podcast, Coffee and Beats. More episodes coming for that shortly. But you're here for one reason and one reason only, and that is to get my predictions for the NFL Week 8. And it was really crazy action going on last week. A lot of injuries happened. A lot of injuries that were very shocking happened as well. But I just want to take some time out to say, how did I do in Week 7? Well, your boy went 10 and 4. Couple of couple of losses short of my 12 and 2 week the week prior. Uh, thanks to those Monday night games, the Cardinals <laughs> ruined it. the Cardinals and the Ravens. And I got some something to say about the Ravens later on. But your boy went 10 and 4. But we're gonna do better. We are going to do better. And again, what I'm gonna do a little bit differently here is I'm gonna go over some of the more least important games first. And then after that, I'm going to go to the key games that you should be looking forward to watching this week. And I'm going to start off with the Thursday night game. Of course, we got the Vikings going up against the Rams on the road. The Minnesota Vikings are a three point favorite. I got the Vikings in that one. The Rams, even though they had an impressive win last week, the Vikings, I I underestimated the Vikings. I I, I must. This is going to be a show full of apologies, ladies and gentlemen. And the Vikings are one of the teams I'm saying sorry to. You guys are for real. Even though the Lions beat you guys, it was a close game. You could clearly see this is a matchup between two of the best teams in the NFC North right now. The Lions and the Vikings. The Packers and Bears are trying to catch up. But I just think the Vikings and the Lions are just a step ahead of both of those teams. But I got the Vikings winning that one. They are three-point favorite. Then on to the afternoon game, some of the least important games. The Lions at home against the Titans. And the Lions had an impressive, again, victory over the Vikings. They are a 11-point favorite. I think they win this one easily. The next game I got here is the Cardinals going up against the Dolphins. Now, there is some rumors that Tua might be back for this game, but <laughs> I kind of doubt it. I kind of see him coming back in week nine, but I could be wrong. But either way, I got the Cardinals winning this game on the road. They are a three point underdog. I got the cards and the points on that one. The Jets on the road against the Patriots. The Jets, <laughs> I keep telling y'all, but I'm gonna keep you, I'm gonna pick the Jets on this one. They're a seven and a half point favorite, but <laughs> I can't say I didn't tell you so. Up next, we got the Packers going up against the Jaguars on the road. I got the Packers winning that one as much as I dislike the Packers. I'm not going to pick them against a team I know they're going to beat. So I got the Packers beating the Jaguars, even though the Jaguars coming off a victory. Up next, I got the Texans going up against the Colts. I got the Texans winning that one at home. And Richardson, got he, you got to play better. Defense and the running game can't keep bailing you out like this, man. You got to get better. And then to the 3 o'clock games, we got the Chargers going up against the Saints. I got the Chargers winning that one at home. Saints got too many injuries. The Bills on the road against the Seahawks. I got the Bills in that one. The addition of Amari Cooper has jolted this offense for the Bills. And it was a much needed boost for that offense. And it, giving Josh Allen another weapon like that, it just makes the game so much easier for him. So I got the Bills winning that one. They are a three-point favorite on the road. I got the Broncos easily beating the Panthers at home. Shout out to the Broncos defense for getting me 22 points in fantasy. And that will do it for the least important games. Now we're going to go to the more important games on the schedule, starting off with the Bengals going up against 
the Eagles and the Bengals are a two and a half point favorite. I said it, they were gonna go with a heavy dose of Saquon Barkley in that revenge game against the Giants and boy, did he not disappoint. Just demolished his old team, demolished. And I remember saying in my previous episode that the Eagles gotta be careful about making this too much about Saquon Barkley or they'll lose the game. But <laughs> man, Barkley said, no, nah, man, no, nah, I got this. Move out the way, Jalen move out the way AJ I'm about to run these dudes over and man he 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 put on a show but I'm gonna say this man I said this earlier a couple of episodes ago I'm not worried about the Bengals I know the Bengals got off to a very slow start they had some very tough losses in the beginning of the season but the Bengals always start off slow and I think they're starting to get their stride Joe Burrow is starting to get his vision and Jamar Chase is playing lights out football at wide receiver the Bengals defense seems to be playing a little bit better than what they were playing at the beginning of the season. You know, a lot of people counted them out, but with the Browns uh, going downhill, the Ravens looking really good, the Steelers looking good. I think the Bengals want to keep in striking distance earlier in the season because the season is about slumps. You never know what team is going to go on a slump. I think it might be the Steelers if I had to choose a team that would potentially go on a slump and the Bengals can catch up and, and kind of gain ground past them like the road runner. But man, I'm not counting out the Bengals. I think the Bengals win this one. Up next, we got the Ravens going up against the Browns on the row. And the reason <laughs> this is not a big game by any means necessary. You're wondering, Rodney, why you got this as a big game, a key game, and, it, and, and put other team games ahead of this one. Well, it's not necessarily the game, okay? The Ravens are going to easily win this game. The Ravens are a nine-point favorite on the road. Uh, what I want to address is the Deshaun Watson situation and what happened with the Browns fans last week. Now, here's the thing. I don't think anybody should be booed. I'm not in the department of a guy celebrating over a guy's downfall, right? But at the same time, you have situations where actions, you, you know, the things that you make in the past eventually come back to bite you in the butt in the future and that's what happened in this Deshaun Watson incident whether you're team Deshaun whether you're team Browns fan I'm neutral in this one I don't have the right to tell a, per, a, a fan not to boo anybody that, that's their right they can boo whoever they want whether you feel like he's guilty or not he still put himself in this situation where he could potentially get in trouble in the future this is one of those very sensitive subjects where hey you know a lot of the players took up for him you know you heard uh, Jamie is Winston passionate interview and everything and there's a couple other players that voiced their opinion about Browns fans but at the end of the day you just don't cheer nobody's downfall that's just my opinion I'm not in the believer of tit for tat I believe that all people deserve redemption at some point in their life especially if they've been on their best behavior for the last few years I haven't heard anything else come out about Deshaun Watson but at the end of the day he did what he did so it is what it is the consequences come along with it up next we got the Bucks going up against the Falcons at home the Buccaneers are a two-point underdog the Falcons they're a bipolar team man they I don't know what to expect from this team one moment they're playing lights out offense lights out football they're playing all these close games and winning in electrifying fashion and then they lay an egg I got the Bucks winning this one I got them bouncing back from a bad loss to the Ravens and I gotta apologize another apology that I have to give out to the Ravens I said they wasn't for real I take that back the Ravens are for real the Ravens are in the conversation to potentially ending the Chiefs three-year repeat run okay so Lamar Jackson I apologize you're the truth you are an MVP candidate along with Jerry Goff but I think the Bucks winning over the Falcons is not a mistake and I think they go on and win it and I take the points on that one at home up next we got the three o'clock games we got the chiefs going up against the raiders and the chiefs just acquired deandre hopkins if i'm not mistaken as of this recording they're in the process of acquiring him which is definitely a huge need for the chiefs receiving core i've never seen a receiving corpse <laughs> for the lack of a better word i mean this 
team is losing receivers left and right. I think ever since Tyreek Hill, the loss of Tyreek Hill, receivers have just not had it great in Kansas City. It's always something bad happening to a wide receiver, whether it's poor play or whether it's a season ending injury. And here we are, they lost Juju, they've lost um, Rice, they lost Hollywood Brown, and now they're just down to Worthy and a bunch of spare parts along with Kelsey. And shout out to Kareem Hunt for helping my fantasy team over the weekend. But he's been balling. They need DeAndre Hopkins, and I know he's not the same thing D Hop from a couple of years ago. I don't, you know, I'm sure he's kind of declined a little bit, but he's better than anything else you have in that wide receiver room except Worthy. This is going to give Patrick Mahomes a huge boost. Don't look now, but even though the Chiefs are 6-0, this is the crazy part. And I know Chiefs fans, Chiefs haters actually are going to hate to hear me say this, but I think the Chiefs are still the most dangerous team in the NFL because they are playing terrible offensive football and they're 6-0. So can you imagine when they finally get their offense together? They're still going to be tough to beat, ladies and gentlemen. And I still see them beating the Raiders on the road. They are a 10-point favorite. Remember all that smack the Raiders talked before the season started, the Kermit the Frog jokes and everything? Well, <laughs> Mahomes is going to handle it when he handles it. Up next, we got the Cowboys on the road against the 49ers for that Sunday night game. I have the 49ers winning that game at home, even though the 49ers are another team. Uh, maybe it's the, the 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 Super Bowl hangover for a lot of these wide receivers that were in the Super Bowl last year. They lost Ayuk. Debo Sanders is gone. I'm like, Debo Samuels is gone. They just lost Jennings. Like, this team is short on wide receivers, which makes it this game a winnable game for the Cowboys, believe it or not. I know a lot of Cowboys fans jumped out the window after getting blown out at home. But they've been playing better on the road. So I would not be surprised if Dallas won on the road. But I'm going to go with the home team on this one. I got the 49ers winning this one. And they are a four and a half point favorite. And then last but not least, we got the Giants on the road against the Steelers. The Giants are a six point underdog. I got the Steelers in this one. Shout out to Russell Wilson for proving me wrong. Uh, another apology that I got to dish out. Um, you know, I felt I was on team Justin Fields mainly for selfish reasons because I wanted him to keep playing for. So as a Bears fan, that pick uh, could go up. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen. If Russell Wilson keeps playing like he played against the Jets, which was short on it. They were short three players on defense. I'm just going to throw that out there. So uh, I still need to see one more game from Russell Wilson before I'm completely sold on him. But he did play well in the second half. He got off to a slow start. Fans was getting ready to boo him and everything. And then all of a sudden, he just turned it up. He turned back into uh, let Russ cook Russ. So I got the Steelers winning this one at home. The Giants are just worthless. Daniel Jones is trash, like I've always been saying. And again, they are a six and a half point underdog. And those are my picks, and I'm sticking to them. I have another episode to follow this one, and it's going to be breaking down my thoughts on the upcoming Bears and Commanders game that it was supposed to be the game of the week but i got a lot of thoughts and expressions on that one so i'm gonna do a separate episode of that but until then thanks for tuning in i'm your host your barista rock the magnificent coffee break sports live and kicking i'll see you guys on the next one stay grounded for life peace